Hey, what is up, cycling family? How are you doing today? Happy Monday. All right, so if you're watching this on YouTube, this is going to be an exciting episode for you because this is my first live interview with Jason from RetroRides.ca here in Ottawa on Sussex, or no, on Spark Street. And it is so excited to be able to sit in front of somebody and actually interview them. So if you're watching it, if you're listening, you have to excuse the background noise because we are actually in a bike cafe. So with that, make sure that you subscribe to the YouTube channel. And if you're going to write comments, I'm the one who's going to be responding. So me personally, so I'd love to hear from you. And I want to give a special shout out to our listeners, particularly in the UK. You guys are consistently top three of my listener um, audience. And I'm so excited to have you guys listening in on my podcast. Now, if you're also listening on iTunes, Spotify, Apple, we would love a five star and a review. So with that, enjoy this live interview with Jason. And I hope you just absolutely love it because here's one last moment. I uh, personally bought a refurbished Bianchi mountain bike. He made it into a gravel bike for me. And that is the bike that I raced in last weekend on my last episode podcast when I was giving my race report. So this is Jason and uh, he's absolutely amazing. So enjoy the podcast. Hey everyone, guess where I am? Yes, I'm down on Spark Street and right in front of retrobikes.ca. So this is so exciting. This is my first live interview in two years for my podcast. A lot of my first episodes started out at, as lives on Facebook and then they just morphed into uh, the audio and then the videos went up on um on YouTube. So now, uh, since things are opening up, I found a place. It's new. I'm going to pan over here. So it's the Ottawa Bike Cafe, and that's the outdoors. So take note, everybody, if you're in this area, that um, on Thursdays and Fridays is happy hour. And that means cheap beer from five to seven. So we are going to go inside to meet the owner, Jason, and get his story and uh, how it all started here. I know, it's super windy. <laughs> all right, come on in. We'll check it out. All right, remember I said it's a cafe, so you're going to get some special yums. And there we go. Here's the brew. Apparently, it's super good. These guys. What did I have? I had the ginger beer. That was, that was pretty good. And um, so they refurbish bikes younger than 1970. I think 1970, he said. No, 1990. Anyways, we're going to get his story. And uh, you guys have to come in here and check it out. And over here is the Escape Tours and Rentals. So you can come and rent bikes on Spark Street to go tour the, the city. All right, here we go. There's Jason. Say hi. Hello. <laughs> He's pouring me a bevy. Yay. Awesome. So. That's a good way to start. Yes, I think so. All right, everyone. Are you sure we're all set up here? It's always fun trying to get everyone in. All right. It's all about perspective. Yes, and making sure the sun is on our face so we don't see all the. Should we keep our masks on? Or should we incognito? Or how do you feel about it? I think, uh, you know, we're chilling in the corner here. Yeah, well, we can space ourselves out. I'm double boxed. Oh, I'm getting there. Okay. Let me just plug that in. Let me just make sure. Okay. Well, so, Jason, the camera's over there. 
So look at you. <laughs> but uh, you look at me. You look at so we're going to just going to chat because I was just saying that it's been a long time since I've done a video interview. Yes. Because uh, I've done, well, I can only do video interviews locally. Right, right. And, but I've been interviewing people globally, like I've been in the UK and Africa. And oh, so that's, kind that's of exciting. And I'm like, I don't mind traveling and all of that. But since things are opening up and I came across this amazing little gem here in Ottawa. I was like, oh, maybe this is the time to start bringing in some local interviews of people who are local. So, Jason, I don't have much. I know that, okay, all I know from Jason from the talk, I talked to him, like, during uh, happy hour. Yeah, during happy hour on Saturday, where we came for an amazing sandwich after our 130K ride. Um, that he has had a location on Spark Street for a while, and he's now moved over here. So, Jason, just give us a bit of background of yourself, and and then we're going to get into your story, I guess, or maybe your story and your background, and then we're going to talk about this location and how you guys can... I was just saying out there that happy hour is now... Thursday, Friday, like you mentioned. Yes, and actually now it's Saturday. <laughs> oh, no, so Saturday. Thursday, Friday, Saturday, you know, we're constantly evolving and trying to figure out what works. And then staffing as well, having people to work, and that's a bit of a challenge. I think it's a challenge for, for everybody for anybody else. anybody that's in food service these days. Yeah. Um, so, but, you know, we've got some good key people. And uh, I'm going to be doing some of the uh, happy hour service myself. And we know the cyclists <laughs> like to drink, so we have to plug the, the bike and beers guys and bring bike them over. Bike and beers, absolutely. <laughs> Get them over here. Yes. Okay, so Jason, tell us about tell us about uh, your story, like how you got into this. So, uh, basically, bicycles my whole life. Since I was a very, as soon as I could get on two wheels, I was on two wheels. All right, wheels. so let's go back to your uh, the yeah, tyke, so, so, the tyke on the train. Yeah, so I grew up in Ottawa. I grew up in Westboro. Um, it was like living in a small town. And um, we had a little bit uh, genuine tea from Toronto, mm. by the way. Fantastic. Local uh, stuff. Yeah. Canadian. Fantastic, fantastic brewed tea. And also they have an amazing uh, tea in a can that's uh, sparkling. It's not overly sweet. Family run business. Everybody we work with at the cafe is a uh, small business. And um, that's our goal to uh, promote and grow local businesses. That's awesome. All right. Let's go back. Okay, to let's the, go back. Let's go to back to the, to the before we get all like. Yeah. So, where we're going. so the first new bike I got as a kid came in a box, uh, not built. Oh! Yeah, because my mother was actually working at uh, a globe warehouse down here uh, where Zibby is now. Okay. And uh, interesting story, she was actually, uh, to talk about my mother, why not? I, yeah, why I, not? I admire her deeply. Uh, uh, they're usually she was, the ones to get us into Exactly. Life. And so she was the first woman there to drive a forklift. No other woman ever drove a first forklift until she was there. And she also got women into the union. No way. Okay, yeah. where was this? This was, it was either Loeb or E.B. Eddy. Oh, Loeb or E.B. Oh, yeah. e. B. Eddy. Okay, way so. Way back in the yeah. day, right? So they warehouse goods through there. That's and where all the condos are going up here in Ottawa. Exactly, exactly. <laughs> and uh, so she bought my sister and I five-speed bicycles, and they were from a company called Royce, Royce Union. Of course, that's U-N-I-O-N, yeah. and I pronounced it onions back then. <laughs> Lots of arguments with people. No, no, it's onion. It's not union, but I eventually got that figured out. And so... I opened up those boxes, and there were shifters and cables <laughs> like, and derailers. What? <laughs> yeah, and uh, as I did back then, I went to the library and got a book and uh, figured out how to do it. And I put those bikes together. And uh, how old were you? Twelve, thirteen. Okay, years so that's old. I, that's a good age to start being. Yeah, yeah. You know, mechanically exactly, inclined exactly. with your bikes. Yeah. And uh, and I and I picked up bikes out of the garbage. There was bikes in the garbage all the time. I picked them up, I repaired them, I customized them, I turned them into choppers, I turned them oh into gosh. dirt jumpers, into off-road bikes before, you know, Gary Fisher and all these dudes were doing this down uh, in the U.S., California, and so on and so forth. Well, I was doing it right here at Hampton Park Plaza in the forest, 
you know, riding these bikes and oh, trying to wow. put tires on them. You know, the story is um, one of my first interviews is with a guy, his name is Bobby, so it's Bobby's Bikes, and he does just that. He gets, like, garbage bikes, not adult bikes, like, but for kids. And he refurbishes them, and he has a contest, and he gives it to like uh, an underprivileged uh, family, like a child. And that's what he does now, and he works full time, and he does that, and he takes like uh, donations. And yeah. I'll have to work. Yeah, you have to check that one out. He's, yeah, it's, it's, uh, he's in New Jersey. Okay. Yeah. There's a lot of people locally that do that. Really? Oh yeah. Well, I know that there's like. But do they give them away? Oh, absolutely, yes, yes, yes. Oh my gosh, you have yeah, to be happy yeah. with that. Yeah, there, there's, there's just different people that I meet uh, through my travels that are doing these types of things. Uh, there's a group called Helping with Furniture forward slash Helping with Bikes. Uh, they are they are 100% volunteer That's run. Me. Yeah, and uh, we've done some work with them. Um, Oh, there's so many stories. Maybe I can volunteer just, for something like yeah, that. Yeah, and, and, and they, they're great because they help families I think it's you know it's a percentage of immigrant families, but also mm. they have a focus on local families too. And yeah. I think we need to focus on local. It's so yeah, important. I think so, yeah. And so they do that balance. And they were doing it with furniture, so they were helping yeah, furnish yeah. people's homes. And people were asking for bicycles, so they started working with that. There's so much furniture that goes yeah. in the landfill. Exactly. Like I love dumpster. <laughs> okay, don't do dumpster diving, but I do. Check out the garbage on garbage day. I will not, not lie. Why I have not? picked up some fabulous finds yes, over the yes, years. Yes. Um, and I actually just found something the other day for my garden. It's garden worthy. I don't think I can do anything else with right. it. But right, right, right. <laughs> I was like, yeah. Err! Yeah. And Back yeah, up. <laughs> yeah, I, I, I still do it. I mean, it's yeah. recycling. And why yeah, not save these totally. And, uh, and get them uh, useful. Again, mm -hmm. there's so many good things. Mm -hmm. And a lot of people do that. There's a whole upcycling uh, movement. Uh, yeah. A lot of that stuff comes from the garbage or donations. Yeah. And it's wood. It's yeah. pure wood, so let's let's see what it can turn into. There's uh, some good stuff yeah. out there you can read for there's, there's a table over here which we can't really see. Oh, it's got right. a, a oh, sewing machine base. Yes, that's a that's a popular one. Yeah, and I built yeah. that with a piece of live edge and put a put some yeah. uh, cedar in the middle and all yeah. that good stuff. So oh, that's good. yeah, yeah. So basically, I've just been uh, working with my hands and building uh, all my life. And um, bicycles were always a part of my life, no matter what career I had or what I was doing. I was always working on bicycles and motorcycles. Motorcycles were a big part, okay. but I've passed the, I've let them go. Uh, you know, got the motor out and put on the bicycle. That's right. That's right. That's right. Uh, at one point, I had uh, broken my leg on my motorcycle. Mm -hmm. And it was set with a curve in it, so they made a bit of a mistake at the hospital. So now I had to go back and have it rebroken. Oh. And I had four carbon fiber frames bolted to it for five months, and I had two 10 mil wrenches to open it up and open it up and open it up to get it straight. And it was set with a big curve in it. Oh and, my god! Uh, so as I was preparing for that surgery, I started mountain biking again. And that was what really got me back in the cycle. Okay. And, and How old are you that when that happened? I was about 28, 29 years okay. old. Yeah. And uh -huh. uh, yeah, it was pure pure uh, user error from the uh, the surgeon. And uh, you know <laughs> That's a and, big error. It though. is, it is. And it was it was a challenging time, I can tell you. It was really challenging. You know, it all I so wanted to do is So you did it yourself. Well, I, I had the accident all yeah. on my own. But I know, but, but the hospital set it with a big curve in it. Yeah. And then um, I saw a surgeon that said, you're going to have to have that rebroken. So I went back to the hospital. They broke it. Oh, okay. They, so they, they uh, did break it. They bolted it. all the carbon fiber. Oh, they did. Okay, okay. It. So I wasn't I, sure, know, sure it was, it was, it was you. My, it, was my first, it was my first carbon fiber. <laughs> but it was unfortunately bolted to my leg. Okay. Not in a bike. Uh, yeah. And I tell you, the only, you know, I, I just envy people I could put on a pair of jeans. <laughs> oh, <laughs> That's just a big thing around my, around my shin bone. How know? long did that last? Um, I had that on for five months. Oh, yeah, that's cool. Yeah, and I had four bolts going down the front of my leg and rods going through and all that kind of stuff. And it just makes me stronger, you know? It makes yeah. me stronger, that's all it is. You, know? so you can create, you can start doing all different things in that yeah, time, Yeah, it, it right? really got me back into cycling. And so I, I, I got uh, quite uh, deep into mountain biking at that point in time. Okay. And so right away I wanted to improve what I had and I started searching for parts and upgrading. 
and I was the guy on the group rides that was fixing the bicycles. Uh, the and, chains break. Yeah, and whatever it was, you know, adjusting. <laughs> oh, that seat height is terrible. I mean, let's see those handlebars. Hang on, just give me a minute. Yes. And, so uh, when was this, like 2000? Like, yeah, that was um, early 2000s. And okay. uh, I joined the Auto Mountain Biking Association in 2005 oh, okay. and started riding with all those fine people. Yeah, and yeah. doing the 24-hour mountain bike races. Oh, yes, you mentioned, and, yeah. Yeah, and a bit of traveling, you know, and that kind of thing. And I've always liked vintage, and I love vintage bicycles, uh, chromoly steel bicycles from the 70s, 80s, and 90s. They're, they're mm -hmm. hand-built frames, they're beautiful, they're rolling works of functional art, yeah. they're light, they're comfortable to ride, uh, versus alloy, which is stiff and rigid and has no movement at all. Yeah. And there's a very small weight difference between a chromoly frame bike and an alloy bike. Okay. So really what we should be riding is, if you prefer, carbon fiber or chromoly steel. Alloy doesn't really have any place unless it's on a... Steel. Yeah. So alloy is good on a full suspension mountain bike. Yeah. But alloy, you'll see what they started doing was taking alloy frames and putting carbon fiber seat stays and yeah. carbon fiber forks. And now pretty much everyone who's in the know is riding carbon fiber. Yeah. But there's also a steel frame movement right now too. And gravel bikes and that kind of thing. And all the big manufacturers are making them again. So in our shop, Retro Rides, we take those beautiful original bikes that were made by hand yeah. with passion and blood and sweat and tears and we refurbish them, we do crazy powder coats on them, and we make them Ooh. fit the individual. So where do you do all the painting and everything? Well, we have a, a company that does the work for us, oh, okay. and I've been working with them since uh, 2017. Okay, are they in Montreal? No, they're in Ottawa. And, oh, really? uh, yeah, yeah, and um, so I, it took a lot of time to get things right mm -hmm. to, so that they could understand really what we're looking for. You know, a lug frame, you know, it's beautiful. The lugs are, are you know, cast or and filed and made by hand, and then we want those to be revealed and, and not covered with too much thick paint. Right. And uh, so the, the colors we're doing these days are wild. Oh, so I know, there's some yeah. great colors yeah. coming exactly. out. Exactly. We just did one uh, metallic pink with a chameleon purple clear coat over top. Do you have that and one in here? It's it's over in the in the uh, storage, but uh, it's so cool. And maybe we can find a way to take a look at it, especially in the sun. It's wild. Um, oh. Later this afternoon, I'm going to pick up a couple of frames from the powder coater. Uh, one is a Bayanki. Uh -huh. We did it in the traditional Celeste green, and then oh, yeah. we put a nice heavy gold clear over top of the Celeste. Whoa. So why not just elevate things a little bit, you know, and just make it a little wild, a little so personal. Then you sell them here? Yes, we do, yeah. And we also do have a lot of clients that come in and they're saying, I want to get my bike painted. And we go, look at all these colors, let's go crazy. Okay, so this company you work with, what else do they do? Because they don't... Do they, are they, 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 they do, do everything. Parts? They do wheels, they do parts, they do fences, they do all that kind oh, of stuff. Oh, I see. Right? Oh, yeah. wow. And okay. so we offer a service where somebody can bring their bicycle to us. We'll disassemble it completely. We'll bring it to the powder coater. We'll get it done in the color of their choice, their desire. And then we'll rebuild it. Oh, okay. So is this like any bike? As long as it's either alloy or steel, not carbon fiber, because carbon fiber will melt because it's a baked on finish. Oh. <laughs> so all we have to do is find you a nice. I was like, maybe I could do my bike, but I don't all we have to do is find you a nice steel frame, and, and, Ooh, and yeah. you'll love having a little alternative ride. I have a lot of people that ride, you know, nice. Maybe my old mountain bike. Oh, they're they're prime for that. They're prime for that. The frames on the vintage mountain bikes well, from it's not, it's like 80s, 90s, 90, 90. Six, I would beautiful. say 97. So it's probably Japanese chromoly steel, beautifully Norco. made. Yes, Norcos, they were putting out beautiful bikes in that time. I love those bikes. They ride super nice and they're fun to rebuild. Uh -huh. And we, we, we turn those into urban bikes, you know? We put nice big fat slick tires, really nice parts, really cool paint job. And it's the ultimate urban bike. You know, wow. Depending on what kind of day you're having, it's either your urban survival, your urban cruiser, <laughs> like, or your urban assault. <laughs> yeah. Right. Well, because that's the one, because it's so beat up, right? It's like 25 years old. And that's what I bring into the city to ride. And I don't, you know, I'll lock it. So maybe I better start being careful because I was like, oh, I don't care. If I, somebody yeah. steals this, yeah, but now no. I guess I better start washing they it. They are desirable bikes, and the fact is there's a lot of custom frame builders that are making chromoly bikes again. There's a whole movement, 
and these these people are artisans. Or it's incredible what they're doing. They're using the same steel that your bike is made out of, and it's going to cost you, you know, minimum a thousand to two thousand to have a frame custom built. And, you know, oh, really? Yeah. So that's what I love about retro rides and the business that, that we do is that we find those bikes and we put them back on the road. Mm-hmm. And it's so many of them we buy from original owners and it's, it's a really incredible experience to go meet people that have bought you know this fine bicycle back in the late 70s, 80s, 90s right. and they were the caretaker with all these years uh-huh. and then we have the opportunity to, to have it for a while and then we find a new owner. Okay, what right. about the poor bike that's like half stripped on or like or something you might find at uh, one less car like you know on on cabin right uh well you know are they getting into it too because they... well the bikes they, they kind of they do things a little bit different than, differently than we do honestly. yeah i, I know um, <laughs> i bought a couple bikes there okay. and it's just i mean if you want a cheap bike you don't have to truly worry about it. Yes, and, and it can be that, you know, and, and everybody has their place, so we're, we're an elevated yeah. uh, But can you find some gems there, or are they... I don't generally, because, okay. you know, their goal is to send, sell those to, yeah. you know, people that can afford them and so on and so yeah. forth. And also, I, I like to really know the origin of the bikes, and, uh, uh, and I've been doing this for so long, and I've been on regional contact, and CEC, and CTV, oh, cool. and all these different things. Now my podcast. And, uh, and now <laughs> no, your podcast, no, which is fantastic. Yes, <laughs> breakfast television, these different oh, cool. things. So there's there's a there's a movement among the older generation. And I'll go, I know this guy, and he came and bought my bike, and he really honored it and honored me, mm-hmm. and I really do, you know. And, and people will have like an idea of what it's worth, and often yeah. I'll pay them more than what they yeah. expect or what they're asking because this way I go with my car and I buy it, and you know we're, we don't sell bikes. No, any bike shop doesn't sell bikes to make much money. So I hear. It's, 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 it's service, <laughs> yeah. right? Yeah. And we work on the most modern to, to the most vintage bikes, mm-hmm. and service is you know super super important to us. We guarantee yeah. our work, and I have an excellent team of people that work with me here at the shop. And I've had two mechanics with me since 2017. Oh, that's amazing. Yeah. 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 So okay, so Jason, have like, when did you decide to open up a shop, or how did you decide that this was going to be? How did this start? Well, well, basically, um... we're going to take a quick break to talk about an October cycling skills four week workshop for women. Now it starts October 8th. And so here's the thing. If you're a beginner, novice or intermediate rider, are you currently stuck in a plateau in your cycling Uh, fitness or performance? Are hills still your nemesis? And would you really love to be able to move to the next level or the next cycling group? If yes to any of these answers or questions, this workshop is for you. Now, it focuses heavily on cycling skills. What does that mean? So, what happens is we got four weeks, four weeks. What the first week we work on the fundamentals, the foundation of pedal stroke. Week two is about hills, hill climbing, transition, pedal stroke, gear changing. Week three is about nutrition, bringing it all together is maybe that's your downfall. Week four is speed. So the sprinting, so transitioning and strength. Now, this is going to start Thursday at 12 noon Eastern Canada time. And the webinar is, this is how it runs. It's both interactive. So we start with a whiteboard explanation. Then we go to a visual demonstration, me on the bike. Then we finish off with quick drills, you on your bike, and I make you give you the full understanding of the whole program. Then you're given homework, so drills to do out on the road. Then we have a weekly Q&A where you can come in and answer all your questions. This has a Facebook group and it's completely open to women who are new to cycling or at different levels. You can find the more information on cyclingskillspro.com. Now back to our episode. I was uh, running a renovation business. I owned and ran a renovation business. 
and it was more of a preservation type of thing. So okay. I did most of the work in uh, New Edinburgh. Okay. Uh, these yes. old, big, beautiful homes, and people that have some money to spend to take care of them. And a lot of them that don't want a uh, contractor to come in and rip everything out and Great. make everything. So I really enjoyed that. And I was living in the neighborhood, and I was invited to someone's house for dinner. And they had a big, beautiful house, this big, beautiful dining table, old, you know, with rickety chairs. And they had them worked on a couple of times, and they were still rickety. And I said, I'll fix those for you. <laughs> and I guarantee you they won't be rickety again, because I will disassemble the whole thing and rebuild it in the traditional style yeah. of which it was originally built. And, uh, and this is all self-taught. This is all stuff that I learned myself. And so I did that job. And and she told two friends, and he told one, and, right. and so it turned into a seven-year run in the business. Uh -huh. Never advertised once, busy all the time. I restored old pieces. I restored a six-sided wine cabinet from the 1800s. And Do upholstery too? I did upholstery. I, you know, I had I have a lot deep in my in my Instagram page. There's lots of things that I've restored. I, okay. I, I did an ancient mirror, and I mixed and matched the paint for it and cast new pieces and oh, wow. uh, chairs that were missing parts and I carved the pieces so I'd save old uh, drawer fronts from old Sorry, dresses. Sorry, he doesn't do that anymore so don't <laughs> yes. get all excited. Yeah, sorry, but yeah, I'm so <laughs> passionate about it yeah. and I also take, you know, found objects and turn them into lights and lamps and oh. there's a theater projector there that yeah, I yeah. turn into a lamp and I, I like that. seeing visual visualizing. Yeah, up things. there, that's the front end of a tractor that I oh, wired up into the light. We can kind of can you see that. Oh, oh there's, there's a, a plant in the way. That's right the there. Plant. There it is. Yeah. Yeah. So you know, come down to 79 Spark Street and you'll see some of these videos. Yeah, I know because like my we used to have we had this couch as we were growing up, and you don't get these couches that are like long and deep and like low. And my mom kept it, and we're like, yeah, I think, and, and of course all the springs are going on right. it, like, right. diving, yes. can't get out of it anymore. And we're like, yeah, you know, you have to get it reupholstered, and it's just because it's just such a, an amazing couch, it's got like the, the, the wood feet, yes. and like, probably on the front of yeah, the yeah, it's yeah. got the, all hand carved, beautiful yeah, so she got that redone, yeah. and we're just like, she did oh, it. yeah. That's fantastic, big job. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, it was a big piece, and then there's two single chairs that go with it too. Right. Right. Yeah. yeah, we had those in the house for like, uh, how old am I? <laughs> for a few years, huh? For a few years, yeah. 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 <laughs> I'm still so glad it's not in the garbage. Exactly, you know? that's that's the beautiful thing, you know, the preservation. Okay, yeah. so you went so, from a full yeah. So I was doing all these different jobs, and yeah. I guess whatever people needed, I would, I would do it, because I, I'm creative, and, and I want to try everything, and I can read a book and learn, or, you know, look it up on Google, or, you know, oh, yeah. you know right? YouTube there's, wasn't around there's, there's lots of information, <laughs> there's lots of information, yeah. but uh, meanwhile, I was always working on bikes. Oh, okay. You know, always, and so business retro rides, got officially named in 2012. Okay. And so I was running the renovation business and running retro rides. And so refurbishing bicycles for people, doing custom builds, doing custom paint. Uh, all myself, I had a paint room in the basement. My, my basement was a shop. Uh, it was super, super cool. So I bought a house uh, that had a big wide open basement and turned it into my workshop. All right. And, uh, business was just growing and growing and I was doing the renovation business and doing the bike business and of course the bike business ran one yeah, the contest. Yeah, started taking yeah, over the that's right. your and, time. Uh, and my business partner here in, in our space who owns the Skate Tours and Rentals, Maria, yeah. um, she had set up here in her first year which I believe was 2016 okay. and I helped her uh, find a trailer and then outfitted the trailer so she could hang bikes and she made the bikes and then I built all the bikes and maintained them for her and so she was doing bike rentals and some guided uh, tours here on Spark Street oh, nice. and in 2017 she got the opportunity to open up uh, a retail spot. And oh, she wasn't, uh, she didn't have a, uh, a location, she was just she had a, a trailer. trailer. She was working oh. out a trailer, you know, which is impressive, go, right? right? She, she made it happen, very tenacious. 
uh, us women. Yes, yes, yes. I love it. I love it. <laughs> and so she invited me to uh, have the uh, two display windows in this space. This was at 65 Spark Street. So yeah, so some, just down the street. Yeah, from here. some of your watchers have either seen it or been in the shop. Yeah. And that was 495 square feet with no running water and two businesses. And, um, <laughs> no running and, water. And, yes. Is there a toilet and in here? There? No. And um, here we are, you know, in the center of civilization. Yeah, center on Spark of Street. On Spark Street. And Paying top dollar, you got no toilet. Yeah, so, you know, we were great friends with uh, Bridgehead. Yeah. And, uh, we sent them lots of business. <laughs> now we have a cafe here. Yeah. We're still friends, you know, yeah. because we all, you know, we all work together. You know, there's lots of business for Bikes everybody. and coffee. Bikes and coffee. Go together. So that was the evolution was... Uh, in fact, the, the cafe concept uh, has been in my mind for many years. And both my daughters work here in the cafe. And we have a notebook that we started in 2012. All about daily. About our cafe. And we have a lot of notes in there. And it's very beautifully written by my older daughter, Isabel. And uh, we just had this dream that this was going to happen. And, um, then I ended up opening up the space here on Spark Street, and from there we were just trying to expand. And it was a bit challenging uh, with our landlord, Public Works and Government Services Canada. There's a lot of We've never been on here, Spark Street, you but know, exactly what we're doing. Yes, so we finally managed to sign a lease on, on this nice space that we have now, and then COVID hit. And, and this is the dream. Ah, oh, it. <laughs> and so that. Uh, and slowly, then everybody started buying bikes. Yeah, and, and then it, 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 it did. It did. You know, and um, there, there's there's a bit of a belief that uh, bike shops have made hand over fist through this, but they actually no. haven't because no. the cost of doing business is very very high. Mm -hmm. um, the, the time spent to do the sale of a bicycle when. Somebody's, oh, I like that bicycle. Can I test ride it? Yes. Let me bring it outside. I mean, this this infected. Okay, go ahead and try it. Oh, okay. We need to like, adjust no. the seat. Okay, you step away. You I'll, buy it I'll or disinfect not. it again, and then I'll adjust the seat, and then oh. I'll disinfect it again, and then you can try it. Oh, let's just, let's adjust the handlebars now, and we're happy to do it. But it would take so long to do uh, these these interactions. I know it's like sight as seen. No, we don't even get to sit on it. You just buy it. Right, That's right. What, uh, and, and, yeah, and we don't work that way. We yeah. take the time with every client. We really want to match them up. And we sell only vintage bikes from the 1990s and earlier. And the reason I chose that was because there's 30 other bike shops in the city selling brand new bikes. Right. And they're doing a good job. Yeah. So there's a niche here. And these bikes are important. Uh, they're not only fine, they're excellent quality. They're, they're, they're very well engineered and, and very finely built. But they're also being repurposed and, and given new life. Yeah. And, you know, the effort that it takes to manufacture a new bike and the, the impact that has and to ship it and all the, the, the plastic and cardboard that's yeah. in the box that people don't see, it's, 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 it has a huge impact. Yeah. So this is our little way of, of doing this thing. And um, it's, it's fun. It's fun. You know? yeah. it's, it's, a, it's a really nice little niche. And, uh, again, service is the key. Mm -hmm. So... We, we really focus on giving the best mechanical service. We guarantee our service a thousand percent. If someone comes back, if someone has a challenge, we say, please come back. We don't ask for your receipt. You don't have to prove anything. And we put the bike up on the stand, we fix it immediately. Great. Uh, if someone buys a bike from me, they could come back. I know where I'm um, coming for a quick derailleur yeah, just Yeah, exactly. <laughs> and if someone comes uh, buys a bike from us, uh, we guarantee the bike for a full year. And if the bike needs uh, any type, type of a tune-up or touch-up, you know, six months later, wh whenever, um, they come in. Again, we don't ask for the receipt. We put it up on the stand right away. It's and one of our bikes. You're part of the family when you buy a bike from us and there could be a three week waiting period but we know our bikes it's only going to take a few minutes we put it up on the stand we fix it right away yeah and this so, is service this is what it's all about for me yeah right so you started your bike shop how long ago like so official? it's official on spark street so my first retail location in 2017. oh 2017 yeah. so that's not very far very no, long no, ago we're still a brand new business yeah, yeah. Really we are especially with you know covid it kind of doesn't count, right? It kind of takes it. I know, it's like, <laughs> it's like nothing. Just X that year out. Let's just That's start right. fresh on 2021. Yes, yes. So, 
now you're telling me that you have plans in here for some serious entertainment and like art shows. So talk, tell us about that. Okay, so we're down here at 79 Spark Street. We have a beautiful that patio place. outside. It's 18 feet by 50 feet. Mm -hmm. uh, we built it with uh, raw cedar lumber. We will uh, just pan out there. Yeah, if you can see, yeah, it's, you can see the it's like out there, anyways. It's right in the middle. Yeah. Um, so we built that. It's a really nice zen kind of place to hang. Mm -hmm. uh, oh, uh, ornamental grasses, uh, wine barrels cut in half with oh, the yes. grasses in yeah. them. And, uh, so we just Lights. want that real nice feel, and we have the same thing here. And so the plan is um, in the winter time, and possibly in the sun, summer, because we all have plans, but we must listen to the business, and, and it tells us where it wants to go and what, is, yeah. what we want to do. So we have our ideas, and the business is really the final decider, and mm -hmm. the clients, and so on and so forth. So in the winter time, we plan to do uh, bike repair workshops, tune-up work workshops. We're going to do flat repair workshops. So What's that? So you come in with uh, your bicycle and uh, we'll let the air out of, out of the tube and uh, put it up on a stand, let the air out, and then you can take your wheel off, uh, change the, the flat, learn how to do it on your own I bike, teach and so like on. That. You do. Yeah. Right. Well, that's fantastic. Yeah. So, and I've done some of that with trips for kids mm -hmm. and that kind of thing uh, in my volunteer hours. And um, I so we're going to. That too. Yeah. Yeah, so we're going to be doing that here. We're going to do uh, full tune-up uh, workshops. And say you come and do a flat repair workshop, you can come and, and have a fun evening, listen to some music, have a drink. We have alcoholic drinks here as well as non-alcoholic. So <laughs> lots of options. We have Change some your munchies. flat and drink at the yeah. same time. We have uh, full-on uh, commercial uh, popcorn machines. You can mm. have some popcorn while you work. I saw that. And, I was uh, looking for the pop. I'm a popcorn fan. Fantastic, yeah. And you can leave with uh, a tube that fits your bike, uh, the levers, and the knowledge oh, that you cool. can actually fix your bike and get a flat. So we really want to empower people. I love, and, I uh, love empowering people because yes, so I important. say right? that's what you're all about, isn't yeah. it? Yeah. You know, I say mean. learning over, over. Oh God, I had this little like because I was just talking to a bunch of girls and they're like, oh, I call somebody, and I'm just like. Why would you do that? Why would you waste the time and somebody else's time when you could just learn how to take care of it yourself? Exactly. What was it? Learning over... Oh gosh, I had... Learning over your... No! <laughs> it was like learning over leverage, learning over... Oh gosh, I just... I, freak, I should have wrote it down. Don't worry. It'll come. No, I'll come to me. Yeah. So, you know, the, and, and people have said to me, well, why would you do that? You're going to harm your business because then they won't come to you. And it's, it's, it's amazing how short-sighted some people Oh my gosh. Because people, so will, people will come. There's so many uh, things we need. Exactly. <laughs> like shops. But, but to have that power and you know, to be somewhere on a trail or in the middle of a century ride yeah. and have that happen and know... It, it actually gives you an amount of confidence and empowers you and your ride's going to be better because that yeah. little bit of worry, oh, if this happens, you know, it yeah, just robs you of a little bit of your power, you know, your, your mental. Your confidence, basically. Yes, exactly. So, uh, and, and we're going to involve that into uh, tune-up workshops as well. So, again, you come in with your own bike. You don't sit and watch somebody you know, explain, which is good. For me, I'm super hands-on. Mm -hmm. So that's how I learn by doing, you know, and... Um, yeah, I can so, learn that. So someone can come in and we'll put their bike up on a, on, a, on a stand and they'll have the tools and they'll be able to go through the whole thing and, and move their gears around and see how everything works and have an understanding of, of the mechanics of their bike yeah. and do the tune-up on it themselves. And they may never choose to do a tune-up on it themselves again. But they'll know their bike yeah. and they'll understand. Or That's they one thing it. that I bring my bike in for. Mm -hmm. I'll do all sorts of other things like take the cassette off and clean it and derailleur and things like that. But the tuning, and I know that I could probably do it, but I do have to visit my bike shop every once in a while. Yeah, and that's good too, <laughs> right? Like, and I, I think that's really important and we need yeah. people. And by the way, I have a call out for everybody that, that, that is watching this. Yeah. Go to see your local bike shop for your tune-up, your spring tune-up, go in the fall. Yes. Wow. Go in the fall, and then you put your bike away clean. What if you sit on it all winter? 
Well, well that's it's clean inside your house. Exactly, exactly. You know, but but at, at the very least, you know, you put it away clean and tuned and ready mm-hmm. to go. And in the spring, all you need to do is put some air in the tires, and yeah. you're not waiting, you know, two weeks. two to six yeah. or eight weeks to get your bike. And it's really helpful to bike shops or small businesses. Yeah. And that's quiet time for us. You know, our Christmas season is April, May, June kind of thing, mm-hmm. depending, and, and then it quiets down. Yeah. So very good point. So fall, you know, we need we need you, people, and you you need us. And then as soon as you're done riding, exactly. you bring it in for a tune up, and you know, pay extra and have them clean it. Yeah, tune up. We, 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 we do the whole thing. Oh yeah, we clean it, we wipe down Where the frame, for we that, do right? everything. It's included in the tune up. Uh, oh come on. Yeah. Like yeah, the clean, everything? Yeah. Okay, yeah. but there's different yeah. prices, right? Well, there's there's there's, <laughs> there's an like, overhaul and there's a tune-up. You know? right? It depends right. on what you've done to the bike. And, yeah. you know, we will recommend what the bike needs. Mm-hmm. That's all we do is recommend what the bike needs. And enough time people have come in for an overhaul, which is like we're disassembling. And yeah. we say, you actually don't need it yet. So let's just do a tune-up and, and you'll be good with yeah, that. Yeah, yeah. And then, um, yeah, the new cable. Yeah, and if, the, if you've ridden a bit in the fall or a bit into the winter, you know, you've got a lot of grit and dirt in your mm-hmm. drivetrain, it's been splashed up there with rain, and then it's going to sit there and oxidize and, and harden and just make everything worse. So let's do it in the That's fall. in the housing, by the way. Right. The, the cables. The yeah, cables cable housing yeah, yeah. and in the chain and the plates and all the little moving parts in the derailers. And, uh, so, yes, yeah, that's, that's my recommendation. Uh, that's Why don't you goal. just volunteer here? <laughs> You're welcome. <Anytime. laughs> I was just thinking about finding a place. I'm like, okay, where can I find some time? I know I can find some time. I can delegate some stuff and volunteer. Because you have, you mentioned like, quite a few places that you volunteered at. That. Yeah, well, there's there's uh, Trips for Kids, uh, which is an organization that takes underprivileged uh, kids, uh, inner is that city with Kat kids. Weaver? That's what Cap. Oh, okay, yes, very okay, good I friend know of her. mine. Yes. Yeah, very very good friend of mine for many many years. And um, she's been doing that for a long time. She's been doing that for a very long time. And uh, there's other organizations like. Uh, uh, Helping with bicycles. Uh, up so again, with bicycles? yeah. So they basically are the ones I talked about earlier. So right. they take bike donations. Great place to donate bikes to. They take bike donations. Yeah, don't put your bike in the garbage. No, find donate it. it. Yes, donate it. Some and, uh, kid or adult will love it more than you know if you're done with it. Yeah. Right. Like we hand down bikes, and I pick up bikes. I think I picked up lots of bikes from the garbage for my kids as you know the young ones and um Why not? we still and have then, them yeah pass them on and pass mm-hmm. them on and pass them on and uh, yeah. you know it just takes a little cleaning and tuning and then they're, exactly. they're good for like another five years you know yeah Mm-hmm. You know, how about those neighborhood kids? Yeah. You know, if you hear them riding by and then squeak, 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 yeah. say, hey. <laughs> Come over here. <laughs> we'll just put a little oil in that. A little oil. You know, even, <laughs> even some olive oil is better yeah. than nothing. Or car oil. Or car, car oil. I actually use mayonnaise not that long ago on a chain. Mayonnaise? Yes, yes, yes. Uh, my partner and I rented some bicycles. Yeah. And off we went. And the bike that she was riding was squeaking. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> and it was too far to go back, and we packed some lunch, and I had some chipotle mayonnaise, <laughs> chipotle, mind you, and I took it out of the sandwich, and I rubbed it all Oh my god! because there was no way I was going to listen to that squeaking sound, and and neither was she, and I wanted to keep going and not turn around and go back, and it, and it, 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 it stayed for the... That's the, oil in that, yeah, mayonnaise. Yeah, exactly, it stayed for oh the, my god, uh, for the ride, hilarious. it kept it quiet for the uh, duration of the ride. They probably went, whoa, look at this chain. It looks better than any one in our whole Yeah, that's place, right. You know? Clean it up a little bit at the same time. Yeah, exactly. Oh my exactly. God. So that's awesome. So now you're here full time. Yep. And um, I did do a little pan of the place. So you have to take, make sure, actually make sure you watch this on YouTube. I should have mentioned because like I said, this is a video. We're sitting in the location. You can hear the music in the background. It's way better than looking at us on Zoom. <laughs> and um, so, can you show us something before we? Um, oh, where can we find you? Oh, 79 Spark Street. No, so, online. Oh, online. Yeah. Okay, so we've got OttawaBikeCafe.ca. Okay. We've got 
www.retro-rides.ca. Uh, uh, we're on Instagram. We're on Facebook. Same thing? Yep. The same handle? Yep. Okay. Yep. Same thing. We're easy to find. We do a lot of social media. We promote a lot. Mm -hmm. uh, our partners that we work with here in the cafe are local partners, uh, um, uh, local breweries. Uh, mm -hmm. Uh, we get our bakeries from Bread and Sons. Uh, we, we've gotten some wine, our, our wine. Um, okay. uh, we got some, uh, yeah, there's some uh, local uh, brewery that's bringing us in some beer right now. Um, so we work with local partners and we do a lot of cross promotion. We really believe in, in working with small businesses. We don't order anything from the big, big suppliers. Uh, and it's really there's a lot of good breweries around here. There is, yeah. Yeah, and um, so and we're getting uh, beautiful cider from Farm Gate Cider. They're from uh, Farm Prior, so we have that in house here. And then do we you have... go over in Quebec and bring some stuff over. Is it uh, just well, I actually live in Quebec, so <laughs> yes, yes, and uh, which <laughs> is too. which is really happy. Um, uh, I live right at uh, the beach, Park Musette, and oh, nice. uh, overlooking the beach, and uh, so I support all the local bakeries and, uh, oh, yeah. and spots over there too. <laughs> yeah, right. so yeah, that's that's. That's the, that's the whole goal. So we're a small business, we support small business, and we also advocate for small business as well. So we're working towards uh, bringing some life to Spark Street. Mm, uh, there's a lot of That's another here. conversation, uh, it right? It is, and, we, and it's a good conversation. So, you know, now's the time to uh, keep uh, supporting your small uh, local businesses mm. and watch out for new places that open up. Because, yeah, yeah existing businesses um, if they've had a year of sales, say 2019, and then 2020, a year of 50% less sales, yeah. then they can qualify for some help, which is great. But a new business cannot qualify for any help. You have to have a year of sales, a year of half sales, and then you get some help. So, you know, if you hear of a new business, do your very best to I get in there and yeah. buy something from them. As cyclists, we're really good. Like, exactly. our, our club is always looking for new cafes, and that's why when we heard about this one, Apparently we had like the whole club out. Exactly, we, we were so pictures. grateful, and, and you'll see the pictures on our <laughs> yeah, social yeah, media. We saw them. Yeah, we were so yeah. grateful to see that huge group. I wasn't here that day, which was uh, my daughter's. And I was like, oh, it's too bad you weren't here because you're the one that's so good at talking to all these people. Well, it's, it's you know, it all comes from passion and loving people. And yeah, we just like coffee and good oh, two food. wheels. Two wheels, that's right. And three wheels when you need it. You know, if it comes to the time, you can ride a three wheeler. <laughs> and don't be ashamed if you know you're too tired and you have to ride an electric bike. There's no judgment. Whatever keeps you rolling, let's do it. That's why I say. Now, oh, do you take care of electric bikes? Mechanically, oh, we'll, we'll see some over there. Yes, and and uh, escape tours and rentals. Uh, yeah. Maria's business, they rent electric bikes. Okay. Yeah, and we do not repair the electronics on electric bikes, but full all the brakes, gears, all that stuff, we can definitely take care of it. We do it regularly. Cool. So do you want to maybe walk us through some of your favorite retro bikes that sure. I see over there? Sure. I don't know if we can get in to see that new fancy uh, thing. We could probably get someone to bring it out for us. Okay, while well, you're taking it on tour. Yeah, and look okay. at it in the sun. Sounds good. Uh, it's not fully built yet, but... Uh, oh, just can, the frame? But it's got some parts on it, just mock-up, just to see how it's going to feel, right. and then we're going to put a really beautiful uh, vintage Tires. group set, maybe a canopy group set, or... You have canopy? You work for canopy. Yeah. I love vintage, canopy. Vintage canopy. Oh, vintage canopy. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Oh. yeah, absolutely. Can you show me some of that? Because I'm a canopy girl. Girl, I know. I'm, I like go against the grain all the time. We've also taken, uh, you know, beautiful vintage uh, steel Bianchi frames. One client, we did a powder coat. I think we did a funky purple, and then we put uh, I can't remember which, but it was a modern canopy group set on the steel frame. And she she rides, and she's a serious road cyclist, and she has her carbon, but she regularly. Early jumps on that, takes it up to the the park, and, uh, okay. and slams it out. Very very happy, and she loves it. It's, so that's what we call it. a resto mod. So we can take a, a resto really, what? A resto mod. So restoration resto mod. modification. So we can. Oh, like we, can a we can do really fun stuff with these bikes. All right, let's, let's go take let's a look at a couple. Sure, let's do that. Can I just leave this stuff here? Yeah, that's fine. All right, let's go for a walk. Okay, I'm just gonna follow you. Gonna get this. All right, you guys. Okay. Uh, there's an interesting bike. Oh yes. If it's, if it's, uh, this visible. is the one. 
Yeah, so this is a 1970s Sakin. So this is actually probably a museum piece. Um, yeah, a little... It has a full, full oh. um, speedometer, uh, AM radio, signal lights. <laughs> I love uh, got a radio. Dual headlights, console shifter right here, mm -hmm. five speed. Uh, disc brake from the 1970s oh, yeah, on the down front. There. I like, yeah. remember, I don't know if anybody's old enough to remember, but I had a bike with, with one of these on it. That's, yeah, generator. Yeah, generator, so, but it was for a light. Yeah, and this is partially yeah. uh, powers the lights on this. I don't this. know why they don't do that. Big, it's not, big, crazy, maybe not yeah. as cool, it, but it makes sense. You know, sense. The, the, the reason they don't do it anymore is because when you come to a stop, the lights turn off. And you want to be visible when you're when you're stopped as well as when oh, you're moving. Oh, do they really? That's right. That's right. Oh, okay. So that's a fun bike. Um, oh, this one's pretty. Another interesting. Doesn't look one. like it's being ridden though. This looks like a. Uh, this is like this is the bell for service. Yeah. <laughs> I'm like, bell for captain. So that's a 1940s. Um, uh, what's Roadmaster and that's all original, all original that's paint. Really pretty. And again, you know, it was we need a bell at the counter, so let's attach it to a bike. And, uh, that's kind of fun. Right. Right. Yeah. That looks good. All right. Uh, up here the on price the is road. right. Yeah. So there's, so there's an electric bike. So we oh, do is sell it? Okay. electric bikes. So that's uh, from Escape Tours and Rentals. Oh, okay. And uh, then we've got Who's some of the Bianchi? retro bikes that are for sale. These are nice city bikes. They're they're very reasonable uh, and they're very comfortable. To ride. I was just looking at this handlebar here. It's old school. It's yeah. Old school. yeah. So that's just a simple old oops, coaster brake bike. Mm -hmm. It's a lot of fun to ride. And for somebody that's just looking for something to uh, ride around the neighborhood and lock right. up and uh, be comfortable. Oh, you got the saddles. Yeah, we've got some locks and saddles, uh, lights, bells, fenders, uh, all those goodies. Uh, uh -huh. Over there to the right is the cider and the wine. Oh, yes. <laughs> don't forget about that. Yeah, don't forget about that. You got some, oh, look at that one. So that's a vintage Lemongi, and that is a fillet braised frame. So the frame is welded up by hand, and then all the joints are polished. And that's called a Look funny bike. The swoop. That's right. Yeah, that's called a funny bike, and that is all about speed. That is really, eh? Very fun to ride. And very fast. So do you take it out regularly? It looks uh, like it's well, up it's there up for a while. There for a while now, but <laughs> yeah. yes, I, I have ridden it, and uh, it's it's almost dangerously fast. Oh. And, uh, nice. Especially for the city. Right. Yeah, and then again, we've got some other nice bikes here. Ooh. Uh, oh, these are fixed feet. No, this no, one. one this one's is, is fixed feet. This one here. I was just looking at the handlebars. Yes, that's a Cambio Reno, and that's Columbus steel. It's Italian steel. Wow. Uh, Campy uh, hubs and oh. crank set. And, Great. And um, this was actually raced on the Velodrome in Montreal by a gentleman named Alan Anderson. Oh, no way. And so we are honored to have that bike here in the shop. So is this... Is this just for show? These like you can't bikes, buy these? these? Are all bikes that are for sale. Here's oh, really? A nice, uh, nice little uh, Bianchi. This one's hey, also guys, uh, only fifteen hundred dollars. Yeah. Uh, nice uh, Bianchi, also uh, with the Columbus Chromart Italian steel, and uh, this one's set up with Campagnolo parts as well. Campagnolo. Yeah. But just a second. Okay, so this. When did they change into the thumb shifters? So. Do you, do you have that yeah, info? Maybe, maybe in the uh, 90s, <laughs> 90s. late 90s. And so this is original with the, uh, the down shifters, tube shifters. Yeah. But we definitely modify these. In fact, I ride a vintage Miele. It's not here at the moment. Mm -hmm. And I have the, the shifters and the lever. So that's, again, Resto Mod. So we can take these bikes and we can do anything. Love it, it's Resto crazy. Mod. So here's another nice one, a uh, Team Miata uh, from the 90s. Beautiful, beautiful bike. And uh, again, you know, we'll take a bike and we'll, we'll uh, just have a lot of fun with it. Yeah. I almost feel bad that I let go of my Peugeot. I got that in the 90s, like right. 91. Yeah, so those are all bikes that have been uh, fully restored. And, uh, I yeah, love the fenders. Restored. Fenders. fenders are cool, you know, some of these bikes, you know, like, you know, original cruiser, three speed, in condition, 
And again, new new parts, new tires, new brakes, uh, and fully guaranteed for a year. You can't go wrong. No, you can't. Uh, this one's kind of fun. It's uh, single speed right here. Ooh. Um, that's a, a 60s rally. Uh, Looks like a little bit of a gravel bike. Yeah, it's a beautiful uh, paint job on it. And, Is that um, something you did? That's original paint. Okay. So what I did was clear coat it. So essentially I put a, a clear over top to preserve the paint. Mm -hmm. And this was a, a road bike with all heavy steel parts. And it was just this big clunky thing. But I saw this beautiful frame underneath. So I stripped it completely bare and turned it into a fixed gear bicycle. That's pretty. And so this is this is your city whip. This is super ah. So the only thing original is the frame. All the parts on it are brand new. So we have a sealed bottom bracket. We have new crank set, uh, really nice gold pedals. Uh, oh, yeah, brand new wheel set, uh, new brakes, the handlebars, the levers, uh, nice big tires. Mm -hmm. So super fun to ride in the city. Nothing, it, it bounces like a basketball. So oh. nothing rattles, nothing shakes, uh, nothing needs, you just got to keep the chain moving and tight and keep air in the tires. And that's hey, that's perfect, what I'm all about. Perfect city bike. And, and style. How come there's people aren't in here, but oh my gosh, there you go. <laughs> Retro mod lights. That's right. Oh. And, you know, you have these 80s bikes, but these... Uh, Oh, really interesting paint job. Oh, <laughs> oh yeah, the yeah. pink. Here's another one, you know, the, the nice uh, purple. Oh yeah. You know? Yeah, the yeah. move. Whoa, love it. Got some great art on the Jeez, wall. Who the did back. that? So the gentleman goes by Fall Down G on online. Fall Down G. Fall Down G. And uh, I gave him a bunch of keywords, and he came in one day, 12 hours. No, yeah. serious. Yeah. yeah, and we're really pleased with it. It's fantastic. It is fantastic. It's great to look at. I yeah. mean, like, there's a it lot gives of a nods. great box background. Yes, yeah, there's a lot of nods to cycling, nods to the city, and Spark Street, and humanity, and people, and uh, yeah. Cool. All right. All right, we'll take a pan of this Spark Street up here. So not to forget that there's um, escape rent tour uh, tour rentals here. Yeah. So if you want to come and uh, check out all the, the uh, retro bikes and maybe rent something and take for a little tour Absolutely. in the city, you yes. can do that. Yes, you can also uh, arrange for a picnic and you can leave with the picnic. No. Oh, that's and true, you yeah. got the yeah. baker, you got the uh, cafe. So there you go, guys. Come here, you can come and work. There's, oh, looks like there he found a plug. Yeah, exactly, so there's our beautiful patio. And there's, so it's not far from Darcy, is that Darcy? That's Darcy's, Darcy's, right Darcy's. so if you've exactly. been there, you just trot on down here and uh, have yourself a, a a nice lunch. Yeah, block one. That's what I say. <laughs> oh, block Starts one. Starts at Elgin, block one. It's, block it's one. easy to get here. <laughs> How many blocks are there, five? Uh, six. Yeah. Six, yeah. all right, there you go. All right, well, we gotta thank Jason for this amazing interview and uh, just talking about his, you know, his background and the story behind this. And uh, next time you're in Ottawa, if you're not from Ottawa, if you're from Ottawa, make sure you come down here for happy hour. Thursday, Friday, Saturday, 5, five to 7. seven. Yeah. And, um, and anytime for coffee, baked goods, yeah. uh, all this good make stuff. Make sure if you're on a bike ride, this is one of your stops. Yes, yeah, so we really appreciate that. And, um, and then you can find him. All the notes will be all in the description, so if you forgot where to find him, it, it'll be there. And then you can easily follow him and myself on Instagram uh, or on social medias and uh, come down and uh, have yourself a cafe. Thanks a lot. So Thanks any so last good. words? Be well. Be well. Enjoy. Keep Be the well. rubber side down. That's right. Rubber side down. <laughs> yeah. Famous. Awesome. Thanks right. so much, guys. Have a great one.